Automatic motorcycles are known for not having engine braking, but I dare say that's not entirely true. Even though automatic motorcycles use automatic transmissions, that doesn't mean they don't have engine braking. Automatic motorcycles do have engine braking, you know? The problem is, many people still don't know how to activate the engine brake on a scooter. Curious, right? How can a scooter without a clutch activate the engine brake? Well, in this video, I'll provide an animated explanation of how the engine brake mechanism works on a scooter and how to apply it. So, make sure you watch this video until the end so you can fully understand what I'm about to explain. Engine braking is a method of slowing a vehicle by using engine deceleration without using the brakes. The effect of engine braking is particularly noticeable on clutch motorcycles, especially when going downhill. When we're going downhill, we shift the transmission into low gear and release the clutch. Because we're not using the gas, the engine is idling, keeping the RPM low. Low engine RPM will slow the motorcycle's acceleration, allowing it to accelerate more slowly, making it easier to control. Engine braking is quite important because it can lighten the load on the braking system. Compared to not engaging the engine brake, for example, when going downhill if you pull in the clutch, the motorcycle will slide without any support. The only support is the brakes, so the brakes have to work extra hard to hold the bike back. This is often the case with medic motorcycles, where when going downhill, the motorcycle slides and relies solely on the brakes to hold it back. Now, let's dissect it further. When going downhill, the wheels will spin faster. In this position, rotational energy flows from the wheels to the transmission, then to the clutch, and then to the engine crankshaft. Because the rotation is connected to the engine, the rear wheel's rotation is restricted, meaning they are more restrained. So the question is, can something similar happen to a medical motorcycle? Now, let's dissect the automatic transmission. Actually, an automatic transmission is very simple. As you can see, I base this on the original transmission found on an automatic motorcycle. It's very simple and doesn't involve any gears. Here there are two pulleys connected by a rubber belt. The front pulley is connected to the engine, so it rotates every time the engine is running. Let's focus on the rear pulley. Here there's the clutch. For those who don't know, automatic motorcycles do have a clutch. Its function is almost the same as a regular clutch. To disconnect and connect engine rotation to the wheels. However, this clutch can operate automatically. So, to understand the engine braking mechanism on an automatic motorcycle, we need to understand how the clutch works. This is different. Unlike a manual clutch, which is bidirectional, transmitting rotation from both the engine and the wheels, the clutch on an automatic motorcycle is one way, meaning it can only transmit rotation from the engine. For simplicity, I've divided the rear pulley into two sections, the inner section and the outer section. The inner section connects to the front pulley, but not to the axle. So if the front pulley rotates, this inner part will rotate with it, but the axle connected to the wheel won't. Then, the outer part consists of a clutch cup connected to the axle. So if this cup rotates, the wheel can rotate. Inside, we'll find three clutch linings. The shape of the clutch linings is quite unique. Unlike a manual clutch, which has a disc shape, automatic motorcycle clutch linings resemble drum brake linings. At the end of each clutch lining, a frame is attached to the inner part. So, a set of clutch linings will rotate when the inner part rotates. This design allows the clutch linings to expand, or expand as the inner part rotates. Therefore, whatever rotates, centrifugal force is generated. Centrifugal force is a force that pushes away from the axis of rotation. In the case of an automatic clutch, centrifugal force pushes the clutch lining to move outward from the axis. Then, 
The three clutch linings are held in place by springs. So when the inner rotation is slow, the centrifugal force is small, and the clutch lining doesn't expand or become restrained by the springs. However, when the revs are accelerated, the clutch lining will bloom. Meanwhile, the clutch cup is attached to the outside of the clutch lining. Therefore, at low revs, the clutch lining hasn't bloomed yet. It won't engage because there's still a gap between the clutch lining and the clutch cup. However, as the rotation accelerates, the clutch lining will engage the clutch cup, allowing rotation to be transmitted. So, in this automatic clutch, it's driven by the centrifugal force generated when the pulley rotates. This means the clutch can only engage when rotation is directed from the engine. In engine braking, the rotation is reversed, with rotation from the wheels directed toward the engine. So, is it possible? Theoretically, it's not, because the clutch is engaged by the clutch lining turning. So, no matter how fast the clutch disc turns, if the inner lining is still turning slowly, it won't engage. So, what if we increase the engine RPM slightly to allow the clutch lining to expand? This is one of the engine braking techniques on automatic motorcycles. So, for example, when going downhill, don't let the throttle down completely, but hold it at around 2,000 RPM. This allows the rear inner pulley to rotate slightly faster, allowing the clutch lining to expand and engage the clutch disc. This transfers the rotation from the wheels to the engine, allowing the engine brake to activate. While the effect isn't as significant compared to a clutch motorcycle, the engine brake is only noticeable at very low RPMs. However, if you let off the gas fully, it can actually cause the motorcycle to slide without any support. The only thing holding it back is the brakes. As we know, if brakes are constantly burned, they can overheat and become prone to failure. That's the engine braking mechanism on a medical motorcycle. Let's get to know our motorcycle by understanding the mechanisms inside. Like and subscribe to the Auto Expose channel because there's still a lot we'll discuss. Thanks for watching.